Welcome to another episode of What Brings You In Today. I'm Erica Bennett. And I'm Taylor Fisher. And today we're here with Charlene Blosh, MD and pediatrician and owner of Southern Pediatric Clinic. And Dr. Blosh, what brings you in today? So in the world of pediatrics, the pediatric patient would say, my car brought me in today. <laughs> but I'm just here to share some information and just some light on pediatrics in today's world. So Okay. Thank you for being here today. So we're going to start off talking a little bit about your background. I know you've been in Valdosta for a number of years. So can you tell us a little bit about your background, how you became a pediatrician, and what brought you here? So I am originally from Trinidad and Tobago in the Caribbean. And I came from Jamaica, where I did my medical school training, and I got into a pediatric program in New York. That was for three years, and then I had the fortune of coming to Brooks County to become a pediatrician. So I've been here since 1999, almost 25 years as a pediatrician. And you've had your clinic that whole time? Uh, well, at first I worked for Archibald System. Of course, now I'm with South Georgia Medical Center. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I think within three years or so, I decided to do my own thing. So. Okay. Well, thank you for being here today. And... We're also, um, we're going to talk about safe sleep because that is a, a big thing for us right now, the safe sleep initiative. Um, so can you tell us kind of some tips that you would recommend for your patients in regards to safe sleep for their infants? So we talk about this at all infant visits and we recommend that parents put their babies in their own bed, not mm -hmm. in the bed. So co-sleeping is not something that we recommend. The bed should be firm and you should avoid, they should avoid putting soft, fluffy items that can possibly block the nostrils and cause problems. And it's also recommended for the baby to stay in the room with the parents for at least the first six months of life. So... I did not know that. I didn't so either. Is that a new back? recommendation for the, in yeah, the room? Yes, for yeah. the, from the American Academy of Pediatrics. Mm -hmm. And of course, back to sleep is... The thing that we have been seeing for years, yeah, um, not side, not on the tummy, mm -hmm. even though the baby might be more comfortable on the tummy, it's not safe. So, and unfortunately, in my 25 years, I've lost five babies mm. to crib death or sudden mm -hmm. infant death syndrome. So, yeah, and the safe sleep initiative is something that um, our pediatrics, our um, nursery, women and children's labor and delivery, something that everyone's kind of partnered around to help educate uh, mothers and fathers when they go home to make sure that they have that safe sleep environment because that is a tragic um, thing that can happen. And we want to make sure we keep our littlest babies safe and healthy. So very good on that. Um Pediatrics, what drove you to be interested in pediatrics as a career? This is interesting. So when I was three years old in Trinidad, my parents told me that, so I didn't know at that point, but they said that I said at three, I wanted to be a doctor. But I said a doctor because I guess I couldn't <laughs> say doctor, D-A-C-T-A-R. <laughs> I'm not sure where that came from, but subsequently I noticed that I had a definite interest in toys related to science, like I would pick a um, doctor set, a microscope, a chemistry set when I was given the option to pick a toy. So I didn't pick dolls and so forth, which is fine. I had dolls, but they were given to me, but I picked those, those sorts of toys. And then when I went to high school, I excelled in zoology, chemistry, physics, mathematics. So Again, the science, the science fields. Um, also, this is important, when I was old enough to appreciate my uh, physician, I was always impressed by him because he, he just made me feel seen. Um, he would call me by my name and he magically would get me better and my family would feel happy. And that inspired me to want to be like him. And interestingly, again, he was one of my teachers when I went to medical school in Jamaica. So that's wow. very yep. cool. Yeah, amazing. So. 
And so you get to take care of, I mean, when parents come to you and you are taking care of their most precious, you know, loved one, yes, like starting at such a young age, what would you say are some of the best parts of being a pediatrician? And then maybe even some of the challenges that you see. So I like all of it. Um, my my favorite, my absolute favorites are the the little babies. Mm -hmm. So the first year of life. And I also really like the teenagers, the especially when they're about to leave the practice, because then I get to see the full range from birth, if they started with us mm -hmm. until they leave, and the impact that hopefully we've made in their lives. So the difficult parts are, uh, I think obesity is a problem now that is difficult to get on top of because there's so many factors that affect it. But, you know, we try to encourage healthy living, healthy lifestyles. We are like partners with the parents to help the kids do what they're supposed to do, which means eat well and uh, be very active, physically active, exercise a lot. And uh, it's, it's a challenge, but we're trying to get there. And, you know, our vision is to deliver these kids to their adult doctors in the best shape possible. Mm -hmm. So working on preventing obesity and handling it when it happens is a, is a big deal. Uh, we also have mental health challenges a lot more now than previously. I think you all know um, anxiety and depression are like super prevalent right now, especially amongst the tweens and teens. And uh, that's like an ongoing thing that we have to deal with. We screen for it, um, but we also have to diagnose it. Sometimes it's, it's a little bit quiet. It's silent. The parent may not come in and say, hey, I think my child is anxious or depressed. But just, you know, looking at the child, child's blood pressure is high and they're not overweight or anything. And they just seem very fidgety and just things about them. And teenagers in particular, they have a lot of what we call, um, let me see what, what's the best word to use. They have a lot of physiologic complaints uh, that stem from mental issues mm -hmm. like anxiety and depression. So they'll come in for tummy ache mm -hmm. or they'll come in for that chronic headache. And what's actually happening is they're struggling with anxiety or depression. So it's important for us to screen on a regular basis, which we do at every health check visit. So. Right, which um, reinforces that annual visit yes. and the importance of doing those checkups and monitoring their progress. And I mean, my favorite part right now is just, I, I'm always just interested in like how tall they're going to be, you know, what's <laughs> their, and how accurate are those growth charts anyways, <laughs> the ones that predict like their height? I think it's reasonably <laughs> accurate. I don't yeah, know how a, they figure that out, but that's There's cool. a best age to, to use them. I think it's age two. Yeah. But, um, you know, we can generally look at the parents mm -hmm. and tell what the kid is going to look like. And we try not to focus too much on on that. Even now, the American Academy of Pediatrics is asking us not to focus so much on body mass index and weight. Because one, it, uh, you know, it makes the kids feel terrible. Mm -hmm. They don't want to come see us. Sometimes mm -hmm. they scare their blood pressure is sky high because they think Dr. Blosh is going to say something. But just to encourage them to do the right thing. And for the older ones, there's something called motivational interviewing, which is different than telling them what to do, like mm -hmm. saying, hey, this is what you need to do. You need to eat this. You need to do this much exercise. But it's kind of asking them, so how do you feel about how are you doing? How do you feel about your weight? How do you feel about eating? Um, exercise, is there anything that you would like to see done better? Is there any way I can help you? So that's a different approach than pointing fingers. Mm -hmm. Pointing fingers doesn't help anybody. You all know that. They may need to teach that um, motivational interview skills to parents. So they I know. Use I, that <laughs> for our advantage, too. I was going to say that might yes. work with physicians who see adults, too, Absolutely. because I feel like that could help. Um, I was going to ask, what are some healthy tips that you give parents um, or tips to help them with their child's healthy lifestyle? Is there anything that you say, hey, maybe try to do this as far as like the weight, but also the mental health? So I would say overall, 
we want to nurture our children and all children, each one is different. God made everyone different. And so comparing, you know, my child, he's, he's on the spectrum and he has some other issues. And so it's been, it's, it's been a journey with him and I learn every day. But the point is, this is your child. This is a unique individual who is growing up. Nurturing means getting to know that child and understanding them and not trying to make them into what you would like them to be. And to be able to do that, you have to spend time with them, give them your attention, give them your air, love, security, and so forth. So I think overall, that's that's the approach. And of course, make sure they have a good pediatrician or family practice mm-hmm. doctor to be on that team, taking the best care of them. So, Yeah, and unfortunately, parenting doesn't come with a manual, right? And I think That's not. And every age is different. Every you know, like you said, every child's different, every age is different. And then I mean, I don't have a teenager yet, but I'm assuming that hormones and the different changes that they go through, you know, once they get that can probably be challenging for do you get a lot of parents that come in there just like, I don't know what I don't know <laughs> what to do. And, and I, I actually <laughs> embrace it and I tell them Hey, you're not expected, especially the first time moms, you're not expected to know anything, okay? So we're going to learn this together. I know you may have read some books and everything, but you're supposed to feel like a fish out of water, right? Right. And it's like a new family because there's a dad, there's a mom, mom had a baby. Um, Now they have three of them. The baby has its own thing going on. Then the parents have to deal with that. So it's like a whole new situation. So... I give them a lot of grace and encouragement and, you know, I I love to help first time parents. I really do. Yeah. Well, I can't wait for you to help me one day. All right. Come on over. Come on over. That would be great. So technology, we're in 2024. I know this is something that you like to talk about. Um, Screen time and kids having their phones on them all the time. So as a pediatrician, what are your thoughts about this? So I can speak as a pediatrician and that's what I will do. I can speak as a parent and say that I'm embarrassed to say that my own child is a victim (laughs) of, uh, you know, media addiction. And he's a teenager now. And I thought that we delayed giving him access to all of that. But we've come to a point where it's, it's quite a challenge. But um, we try to give parents advice during the first 18 months of life if they could avoid screens altogether and except for FaceTime because babies respond to faces and FaceTiming grandparents and so forth is exciting and, and great for them. But certainly don't put them in front of television. One, because... It's not good, too, because it's not good. Um, it just, <laughs> they don't get much from it. It's like yeah. uh, overstimulation of their brain, and it's not in an organized way that they can learn very much. You spending time with your child is way more beneficial to them than any Miss Rachel program that they can look at. I know Miss Rachel is popular and she's awesome and she came of age during COVID, but she is not better than you spending time with your child, whether it's just just spending time talking, singing, saying anything, talk to them. So the American Academy of Pediatrics says, no, not until age 18 months. Between 18 months and two years, we can do maybe an hour, no more than an hour, right? Well, I would say actually 18 months and five years, an Mm -hmm. hour day of screen time. And then between five and five and older, I think um, you really want to make sure that their sleep isn't being affected Mm -hmm. by things, their family activities and their eating. And, you know, they they just need to have a, a life which will kind of take the place of of that time that the extra time that they might be wanting to spend on the screen. And then when you come to the tweens and teens, you know, we have to talk to them about being a good digital citizen. You have to find out what are you seeing? What what did you read, you know? You have to probably play games with them as well, which is something that I'm not good at because I I am not interested in 
any of those games. It makes my head feel like heavy. And so, but if you're a parent and you are able to play with your child, I think that's a great way to kind of bond and gives you an opportunity to discuss with them things that they might be seeing and hearing and so forth. So they understand boundaries and safety on the internet or whatever. So. Yeah, it's so hard because we didn't grow up with that Absolutely. kind of access. And so it's just so different. I mean, even if you think about video games yes. are completely different. They now have the ability to play with their friends that are across That's what my the United does. States or, or you yes, know, the friend classroom that's just at their house and they're able to talk to them real time. It's amazing. And while all of that is is can be good, it, it's also very addicting, I think, to very, them, that very. connectivity. And, and then it makes it harder, to, like you said, if you're noticing that they don't want to, because I, I feel like I've experienced this with my older one before, but they don't even care yes. if they eat or if they go do anything, yes. you know, they get to where they would right, prioritize that game over other things and um and it's built and designed just like facebook instagram any of the stuff is for adults to keep them wanting more and yes. to, so it's very um kind of scary but i think i appreciate that yeah you know you're helping so <laughs> helping especially canda there's um a website healthychildren.org if you go to the american academy of pediatrics you'll find it and if you go to media if you type in media it can take you to something called a media plan that you can develop for your family. So it just covers all aspects of media use. So you come up with some rules which the child can be involved in. For example, if you say, hey, um, everything cuts off. There's no use of media at dinner time or whatever. Um, everything is cut at whatever time. Whatever limits that the family would like to introduce. And that's something that can be printed and you can have the child to sign it. So it's a healthy, it's a good mm -hmm. tool. It's a good tool. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, I think my generation is maybe one of the last that didn't have that from birth because I didn't experience that right away when I got in high school. So, wow. Um, so I know you're very passionate about mental health, and we touched on that, and you are a part of a nonprofit called United to Prevent, as am I, yeah. that focuses on suicide yes, prevention. Um, so I know you mentioned the screening. So you do those screenings with your patients when they come in of we a do. certain age. From age 11, for, yes. For um, suicide suicidality. and depression, mm -hmm. bullying, and then if we see signs of anxiety, we can throw in the anxiety screen or... or also, um, OCD, mm -hmm. obsessive compulsive disorder. We have a screen for that as well. So, so if any of those screens come up with something that may be concerning, what would the next step be for the parent? So, of course, we talk to the child because we are big on explaining what's happening to the child. Talk to the parent. Uh, refer for counseling. That's a big part. We don't believe in just giving medication without counseling. And many studies show that doing counseling and taking medications, many of which I can prescribe, will help the most, more than each individual one. So mm -hmm. put together, the best deal would be counseling and medication. And of course, the pediatrician and the office encouraging that particular patient whenever they come in, treating them extra special and so mm -hmm. forth. Yeah. And are you seeing um, any rise in this like mental health concerns or is that something that is rising it is it is real it is real and i think you know that uh, suicide is the second leading cause of death in that age group 14 to 26 right after accidents and this is this is very concerning and so um we just have to identify it and try to prevent it as well by getting the kids at Social media control and, and management of that is super important. And uh, I'm a Christian. I believe that uh, church plays an important part in their nurturing and development, so encouraging them to interact with their church youth groups and so forth. I think that's useful. So, Yeah, I was going to ask if you had any tips for parents, you know, before they go to the visit, before they get the screening, if they're noticing that their child is acting different Yes. You know, what What should they do if they're concerned about that? So if they are, they should call us and let us know that um, they'd like to talk about it. I do telemedicine appointments, so 
that's usually a good place to start if I need to see somebody right away and there isn't a right away in-office appointment, I can talk to them um, via the telemedicine visit and get a sense of what's going on and, and start helping the family right then. So I think once parents are concerned about their child, uh, that's to me like urgent mm-hmm. and uh, we need to address it. I'm sure it. It, they don't notice it right away, right? It's probably Absolutely. one of that's very small daily day changes and then one day it's like, wow, this is an issue. Right. And-, and a lot of parents tend to, um, you know, hope for the best, meaning you might see something, but then you say, oh, it's nothing, you know, maybe. So by the time they come and say, hey, I am worried about this. It's been probably going on for a while and we need to address it right away. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, as a mom, that's like the scariest thing, you know, and not, I know the best, like the funnest to talk about, but I do think it's so important. But the communication, communication Mm -hmm. with them, not losing that ability to communicate and let them know that no matter what, you love them, right? And you're not judging them based on their performance in athletics right. I mean, or that's in a class. Whole we so, talked about electronics, but yeah. in, in our particular area, athletics and competitiveness is huge. Sports, and so um, you know, I I definitely see that sometimes even in my world is try not to put too much pressure on them. And then you, you hit the nail on the head earlier, not living through them and trying to make, you know, that there aren't just a replication of you, you know, there are their own people, but trying to support them best you can. And it's, it's it's a balance, balance, you know, because you want to expose them. You want to give them the opportunity to learn different things because that might be their thing. Mm -hmm. And if you didn't give them an opportunity, um, so like my son, you know, we, we put him through everything and he ended up doing tennis and cross country. But I remember when we put him on the football field, man, that was, a that was amazing. <laughs> so, so he, he's wearing this big outfit. It looks very awkward. He took forever to get dressed. Everybody's out the changing room and he's still in there. When he comes out, he looks totally lost. And then he's like trying to high five people. Meanwhile, the boys are like, what? No, 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 no. This is, we are like aggressive here, yeah. you know? So then the coach says to me at the end of the first time, you think he's going to be all right? And I was like, <laughs> you know what? I don't think we're going to go with this one. I yeah. think I think he got yeah. his, I got a picture of him wearing his little outfits yep. and everything. It looked cool, but we probably sit this one out. So we didn't do football, but I mean, I love football, but it just wasn't for my child. Well, you know? and, and outside of that too, like in the career space, I always love asking physicians what, you know, in, ignited that field to be a physician. I was never really exposed to phys, uh, medical careers as a child. I never really thought, thought about that but then now that I'm you know hindsight's yeah. 2020 I'm like that would have been cool like I wish yes. I would have been exposed to that to potentially so I always like to try to encourage I'm always like all right what was what is your advice just in case I can put a little bug <laughs> in their ear maybe they'll absolutely you know, be, a, be a doctor one day too so yeah but I think you know God makes everybody with something special yeah. and uh, I think I was meant to be a pediatrician and I thank God for that that I ended up becoming one so we just have to really observe our kids and see what it is, what they are moving towards or where they may have passion, interest and so forth. So, Well, we're yeah. certainly glad that we have you in our community. We are blessed. I'm happy to be here. It's been a blessing being here. Yes. Um, are there any special initiatives or projects that you've been able to be a part yes. of that yes. you're very passionate about? So I'll talk about what we're doing at our office. We are sponsoring, and we have been doing it for several years now, a reach out and read program. So every patient between six months of age and five years of age, when they come in for their health check, we put an age-appropriate book in their hand, and the books now are all in English and Spanish. So they're learning to speak English and Spanish, both the parents and the and the, the little patients. So it's it's really good. That's I'm proud cool. of that. Yeah, that yeah. is so cool. Yeah. I think reading is like super important. My father was a reader, so we lived in a very humble abode. We had a one bedroom house with one living room, one little kitchen, outside bathroom, and toilet. But 
he had a bookcase um, with a with a lock key and everything, and he had all the different type books sectioned off. And that's how I knew the word miscellaneous because that was at the bottom. He had a tape that said miscellaneous. I said, miscellaneous, what's that? <laughs> but at an early age, we had a section with health health science books. And uh, I would pull those those books and look at the pictures and I was fascinated. So you would see all the muscles and the blood vessels and so forth. So just to put a plug in for books yes. and the importance of exposing kids well, and to... I remember when they used to come around and try to sell you like encyclopedias and stuff exactly. like door to door. I yes, mean, yes. you were something if you had a full set of yes, encyclopedias. Yes. Yes. Uh, but nowadays, I mean, people have so much more access to information. Yes, I mean, you different. really can learn yeah. um, so much. But I definitely th- to limit the screen time, you can get some big paper books are good. So. 20 minutes a yes. day for those who can read. Yes. Just That's make cool, them do it. That's yep. one of those things I had to make my son do. He's not a natural reader. But I would say, no, you have to do 20 minutes. Otherwise, nothing else comes. So, yeah. I like it. Do you have um, any advice to leave us with for parents? parents that are about to actually become parents, new parents? Do you have any nuggets of wisdom? So I would say take care of your health. Uh, Several studies support that um, maternal and paternal health are really important in the baby that's created and has impact for the health of that baby through the life of the child. So that's interesting that you asked it. So take care of yourself, right? And that, so that means physically, right? Mm-hmm. Mentally, emotionally, and uh, make sure you, yeah, just relax some, um, know how to, what, what is it called when we take care of ourselves? Uh, self-care. Self-care, <laughs> there you go. Self-care, that's the word I was looking mm-hmm. for. So make sure you have your self-care in there, okay? Yeah. Do you ever eat here while you're here seeing patients? Whilst I'm seeing patients, no. Well, not while you're seeing patients, <laughs> but we've been asking our guests at the end of every episode what their favorite meal is here in the cafeteria. Oh, you mean at the cafeteria? Or in the spice. So I didn't know if you had you a really, favorite you meal. Really, you really want me to say? On, okay, so I like the grilled chicken sandwich with fries. <laughs> That's my favorite, too. <laughs> that is my, No one has said that yet. Grilled chicken sandwich with curly fries with is curly what fries. I get on Fridays. No, normally. not too much fried foods, okay? Right. I'm supposed to say that, and I mm-hmm. try to live it, mm-hmm. okay? Well, but, yeah, good. that's my favorite. Okay, yeah. good. That's a new one. And she's also does Orange Theory, so I know for anybody that wants a good exercise <laughs> regimen, I do it as well. It's yes. a great way to get your heart pumping and get yes, ma'am. some good mental clarity. Um, but Dr. Blash, we thank you so much for taking time to spend with us and share your story. And then um, I know parents and prospective parents alike can benefit from hearing your words of wisdom. We can all appreciate that. So I thank you for that. And um, thank you to the listening audience for tuning in. If you have any questions or any topics that you want to hear about, feel free to let us know. And we'll be glad to see if we can get them on our show. And be sure to like and subscribe and tune in so that you can be an advocate for your health. Yes. Thank you. All right. Thank you all.